wanted to talk about uh, Species of Spaces by Georges Perec, or actually I'm going to upgrade that to Species of Spaces and Other Pieces, uh, which is like more collected writings. So in a kind of uh, Desert Island Discs kind of way, if I could take one book with me, it would be this one. Uh, for those of you that don't already know or are familiar with his work, Perec was a writer from Paris, born in 1936, and he died quite young, just 46, in the same month I was born, March 1982. Uh, for most of his working life, he was an archivist in a science library, and he was associated with the group Ulipo, who was a group of writers and mathematicians, and they were very interested in sort of word games and the use of uh, formal constraints in literature. So uh, I think that's very apparent in lots of his work, because he loved to use sort of puns and make right crosswords and solve them, and it's, um, He'd write long anagrams and palindromes and lithograms. So he managed to write a whole novel uh, without using the letter E. And then um, to use up all the leftover E's, he wrote a short text called Le Vervenant, where E was the only vowel used. Um, so yeah, I've been influenced by quite a few of his writings. Um, but yeah, as I said, this is the one that I would sort of take with me to, to live with. It's a beautiful book. Um, let's see, and also it made an impact on me at a very important time because, you know, sort of, there's a, lots of years of studying art, but I think I was quite lost for a long time, and then everything sort of came together in a very important time where, you know, I feel like I can say I was born as an artist, and uh, if I didn't at least know what I, you know, what I thought I knew, at least I, I was more aware of what I didn't know, and I became more, uh, I don't know, aware of my projects and what I was really interested in. So, um, yeah, I think I remember actually the first time, like, why I read this. And it was because I realised for the first time I was more interested in the form of things rather than real narratives. I, I liked, uh, you know, just more of the, the form and the aesthetic of a slideshow or the library book or the photocopy rather than the actual story being depicted. So. Um, yeah, like a very sort of key piece that I made, uh, like 2006, was a, a slideshow, and it was sort of about an Arctic narrative, and there was a slightly nonsense uh, voiceover in Swedish, which nobody was supposed to understand, so it doesn't work if there's any Swedish people in the audience. <laughs> but it was just for you to have the comforting voice and to feel that it's about something. And so uh, I think I remember my friend Dushko recommended that I read this, because um, there's, a, there's a piece in it, called 243 Postcards in Real Colour, which are just, um, yeah, I think they're just 243 postcards that he made up, so we're camping near Ayacho, lovely weather, we eat well, I've got sunburnt, fondest love. We're at Hotel Alcazar, getting a tan, really nice, we've made lots of friends, back on the 7th. We're sailing off Lille Russe, getting ourselves a tan, food admirable, I've gone and got sunburnt, love etc. Anyway, that's just uh, three of those. But, you know, there's something nice about just the using the form and not being weighed down by a real, I don't know, like a real actual sort of narrative and just using it as a jumping off point. Um, so yeah, let's see, where am I now? So, um, yeah, so I think the thing that sort of really influenced me from his writing is the sensibility. You know, I think before, before this kind of important year for me, I felt like I didn't really know enough. I think I've got slight obsessive compulsive tendencies, so I didn't feel like I really knew enough or had a total enough knowledge about something to write or, or make a piece of art. But this kind of threw that out, because you use such economy and playfulness that um, yeah, you just use it to explore all manner of spaces. So in, in Species of Spaces, he starts with the, the page. So there's, this is a page about the page, uh, which you can see, he sort of just talks about how he writes, and he writes in the margin, starts a new paragraph, he refers to a footnote. He's very fond of footnotes at the bottom of the page, even if it doesn't have anything in particular to clarify there. So, you know, just that playfulness is really kind of, uh, yeah, striking and refreshing and influential. And then also in, in this book he goes to just explore, write about the bed, the apartment, town, country, the planet, and, you know, the universe. So it's a little bit like the um, Eames film, 
uh, the Powers of Ten from 1977, where you sort of see just a, you know, a viewpoint zooming up from a couple having a picnic and it goes out and out every 10 seconds going uh, to the power of 10 bigger until you end up sort of at the outer edge of the, the galaxy and then zoom all the way in. Um, so yeah, so I think the confidence in little simple details that points to larger truths is really like, you know, sort of key in his writing. So uh, yeah, I think earlier on I felt like I had to borrow narratives maybe from a lack of confidence so, uh, let me, sorry, chapter, oh yeah, like, for, in, in one chapter he points out that the distance from the Earth to the Moon would be the thickness of a piece of cigarette paper folded into 49 times. And that's, you know, kind of representative of the way that he uses the small and the everyday to point to larger, more profound ideas. And the other main influence that I've really taken from his work is the way he embraced constraints. So one big project which I just finished over a year ago is called To Fill a Void, which also borrows a lot from... Um, the title is kind of borrowed from his novel, because uh, the novel written without letter E is called A Void in the English translation. So To Fill a Void, I basically typed the letter O, lowercase, on a typewriter until it clogged up with ink and dust and became a black dot. And I knew that would happen eventually, but I didn't know how long it would take. So, um, yeah, no, it took really long. And um, <laughs> it was almost two million O's, and I was typing it onto sheets of newsprint, so it ended up being about 10 metres long on this wall. Uh, let's see, how, how am I doing for time? Uh, we've got about three minutes. Okay, let's do this. Okay, this is good. <laughs> um, okay, four sheets of newsprint, two million O's. Other recent works which I feel have a profoundly Perakian influence are the ones where I've been using the fundamentals of language, so either just the alphabet or the dictionary, and I've either typed the alphabet over the top of itself to just get the blackest black and almost type through the paper, or I've been photocopying all the pages of the dictionary or the encyclopedia on top of each other, so the tone just builds up, and um, yeah, it's kind of obscure. but. In the same way that, you know, sort of, uh, Perak is fond of puzzles and, you know, things. I, I, I like leaving clues, so I always want their, yeah, I want people to be able to work things out. So when you see, like, a black, solid rectangle of a page of a dictionary photocopy, still at the edge you can see A or B, and you can work out which letter in the dictionary it is, and you can sort of, kind of, get, get to what was there. Um, Okay, and yeah, and so, you know, he uses lots of puns, and I think sometimes people think of puns and just making things rhyme can be quite facile, but I think there's something about rhymes and puns that can make things quite resonant. So, the other thing that I really like from him is when I actually managed to come up with a sort of very correct title or come up just with like a nice pun or something for a title that sort of resonates. So, uh, just to fund an exhibition last year, I made a limited edition and it's made from a photocopy of two brush strokes overlapping and uh, in the end, because I used the photocopy in Goldsmith's library and try not to break them, uh, I was quite pleased when I came up with the title New Cross because it refers to, you know, the form of the cross and also it's made in New Cross. So, uh, yeah, so that's it, I think. <coughs> right. Thank you.